Hello everybody. So yesterday we used the inverse to solve missing number problems. Today we're going to use the inverse to check our answers to our calculations. So today you're learning to check your answers to calculations. So the first thing you're going to need to do is identify the operation that has been used. So by operation, I mean addition, subtraction, multiplication or division are four main operations. Success criteria two, you're going to need to be able to represent the equation in a bar model or cherry model. I'm going to use the bar model today to show you. And success criteria three, is to use the inverse operation to check the answer. So let's just start by recapping what we did yesterday. Pause the video now and solve these missing number problems. Off you go. Have you done that? Well done. So 55 add something equals 73. So first of all, I'm going to represent that in a bar model. I've got two parts here that make another number. So 55 add something equals 73. If I take that part away, I'm left with this part. So 73 take away 55 equals, hopefully you would have used a good strategy to work that out. You could use a pictorial jotting. I am going to use a number line to count on. 55, I'm going to add 5 to get me to the next 10, which is 60. And then to get from 60 to 73, I know I need one more 10 and three more ones, which is 13. 13, add 5. Well done, it's 18. So 73 take away 55 is 18. So our missing number there is 18. Did you get that right? Well done. Okay, I'm just going to rub out my workings out just so that you don't get confused with the next one. But I wouldn't want, ever want you guys to rub out your workings because they're really useful. Something add 24 equals 58. So I'm going to draw my bar model. I know I've got two parts that make 58. Something and 24 equals 58. So I know if I take away this part, I'm going to be left with this part. So 58, take away 24. Here, I can see there's gonna be no regrouping, so I can just take away four ones from eight ones, which gives me four ones, and two tens from five tens, which gives me three tens. So the answer is 34. That's our missing number there, 34. Did you get that? Well done. And then here, something take away 47 equals 23. So I know that this something is going to be my total because a number has been taken away from it. So I don't know what that is, but I know that there are two parts which make it, which are 47 and 23. I'm going to use my inverse operation, which is addition. So 47 add 23. And here, I know their number bonds to 10. So I know my seven and three are going to make 10, and my 40 and 20 make 60. So altogether I have 70. So my missing number there is 70. Did you get that right? Well done. Okay, so we can also use our inverse to work out, uh, to check our answers to calculations. So here's a calculation. 45 add a 7 equals 52. So I can, we can use our inverse there to check whether that is correct. So the first thing I'm going to do is represent that in a bar model because it's just so helpful to us to work out how we can use our inverse to work out the answer. So our total there is 52. That's the whole number. We've got two parts that make that whole. So I'm going to do 45 and seven. So I'm gonna use my inverse now to check whether that's correct. So if it is correct, then I will be able to use the inverse. And if I take one of these parts away, it will be the other part of the number. 
So if I did 50, 52 take away 45, the answer would be 7. And if I did 57, 52 take away 7, the answer would be 45, if that is correct. So let's have a go. Let's try 52 take away 7. So we're going to take away this part and we should get 45. 52 take away 7. So again, I can use any strategy I want to do that. I could say 52 take away 7. Well, I know that 7 is made up of 2 and 5. So I can take away my 2, which gives me 50. And then I can take away my 5 from 50, which gives me 45. Okay, so was that the same as that? It was. So I've used my inverse to check whether that is correct. And it is. That's super. Okay, let's go another one. Here's a calculation. 87 take away 15 equals 72. So I'm going to show that in my bar model. Which number is the total that's going to go up here? Well done, it's 87, because that's our largest number, that's our whole number. And we've got these two that are the parts that make up the whole. So we've got 15 and 72. Okay, so this time let's use addition. That's the inverse of subtraction, the opposite operation. So we're going to use addition by adding these two to see if we get to 87. 15 add 72 equals. Okay, let's have a go at adding those. I'm going to add my tens and my ones. So five add two gives me seven. And seven tens add one ten gives me eight tens, 87. So is that the same as that? Yes, it is. So I know that 87 take away 15 does equal 72. So I've used the inverse there to check the answer. Let's have a go at one more and then you can have a turn. 56 add 34 equals 87. Let's put that in a bar model. Where's my total? What number's gonna go at the top here? Good, it's 87, well done. That's the whole number, it's the largest number there. We've got two numbers here that are the parts of that number. 56 and 34. Okay, so if we want to use our inverse, which operation are we going to use? Subtraction, well done. So we'll start with 87, that's our menu end. And we'll take one of those parts away. Let's take away 56. So we should get 34. Let's see. 87 take away 56. I'm going to subtract my ones from my ones and my tens from my tens because I can see there that I'm not going to need to regroup. So it's going to be nice and easy. Seven ones take away six ones gives me one one. And eight tens take away five tens three tens. Well done. So my answer is 31. Is that the same as that? No. So that is an incorrect. So what should that say? Pause the video now and have a think. Have you worked it out? Well done. It should say 56 add 31 equals 87 or 56 add 34 equals we know that 6 and 4 make 10 and 50 and 30 make 80 so 80 add 10 equals 90 that should say 90 okay well done right now it's your turn to have a go so I would like you to use your success criteria, please, and have a go at this question. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I would like you to identify the operation that has been used. 
Okay, so here it's subtraction. Represent it in a bar model and then use the inverse to check the answer. So you're going to use addition to check the answer. Pause the video now and have a go. Have you done that? Well done. So we would have done a bar model. You would have identified that the whole number is going to be 67 because that's the minuend. It's the number you started with, the biggest, largest amount. You've got two numbers which make the number 67, which is 34 and 31. We're going to use the inverse operation. So we're going to use addition by adding these two parts to see if they make 67. So 34 add 31. I am just going to add my tens and my ones. Four add one is five ones and three tens and three tens make six tens. The answer is 65, not 67. So is that calculation correct? No, it's not. So I need to have another go now and make sure that that's correct. 67, take away 34. Let's have another go. 67, take away 34. So I'm going to start with seven ones and take away four ones. What should I have? Three ones, well done. And then six tens, take away three tens, gives me three tens. So this answer should be 33. Well done. Okay, now it's time for you to go have to go at a challenge. So challenge one is using your inverse to check these calculations. So use that bar model. And if it's an addition sum, use subtraction to check whether that's correct. And just put a tick or a cross next to them. If you want to, you could have a go at correcting the ones that are incorrect. Um, if you want to, if you've got some extra time at the end. Challenge two, I want you to work out the answers to these questions. So you would do 35, add 28 and find the answer. And then you'll use the inverse to check whether you were correct or not. And that's a good way to spot if you've made a mistake. If you've made a mistake, you'll then need to go back and correct your first answer. But don't rub it out though, because I want to see that you've made that correction. If you would like to have a go at challenge three, you're going to solve the word problems, which are on the class page, and then use the inverse to check the answer. So let me show you what I mean. On Sunday, I spent 98 minutes on my art project and 35 minutes on my numeracy homework. On Thursday evening, I spent a total of 100 minutes on my homework. What is the difference between the amount of homework I did on Sunday and Thursday evening? So first of all, I need to work out what I've got to do. So I spent 98 minutes on my art project. So let's do art. 98 minutes. And this is Sunday. And then I spent 35 minutes on my numeracy homework, so my maths. So let's do 35 minutes. Okay, so that's all happened on Sunday. And it says on Thursday evening, I spent a total of 100 minutes on my homework. So Thursday, 100 minutes. What is the difference? So we know, remember that means subtraction between the amount of homework I did on Sunday and Thursday. So the first thing I need to do is find out how many minutes I, I um, spent on my homework on Sunday. So I need to add those two together to find the total. So 98 add 35. So I know that 98 is close to 100. So I'm going to add two, pretend I'm doing 100. 
So that's that rounding and adjusting strategy that we talked about a few weeks ago. So 100 add 35 will give me 135. Then I need to take away two again. So that's 133 minutes on Sunday. And then on Thursday, it was 100 minutes. So I need to find the difference. So 133 take away 100 equals, well done, it's 33 minutes. So the difference is 33 minutes. So the answer is 33 minutes, but I now need to use the inverse to check my calculations. So 98 add 35 equals 133. How can I use the inverse to check that? Well done, I could do 133 take away 35 and see if I get the answer of 98. And if I do, I've got that correct. So that's what I would want you to do. And then you can give that a little tick if you got it right. The same here. How could I use the inverse to check that? Well done, I could do 100, add 33 and see if that gives me 133, which it does. So then I can give that a tick and I know that I'm correct. Okay, so that is what I would want you to do if you're doing challenge three. If you can't spot straight away what the inverse is, then draw out the bar model because it will help you to work out how to do that. If you want to have a go at the optional extension, if you've even got more time to spend on your maths and you'd like to have a go at this, you don't have to, it's optional, then I want you to solve the algebraic equations and then check your answers. So those of you who did the optional extension yesterday, you would have um, had a go at some algebra. If you haven't had a go at it yesterday and you want to do the optional extension today, have a go at yesterday's optional extension because otherwise this one won't make sense. So what I would like you to do for today's optional extension is solve the algebraic equation like you did yesterday. So 7t plus 8 equals 78. So first of all we'll take away this 8, use our inverse to take away the 8. So take away 8 from there and then take away 8 from here which would give us 78 take away 8. Well done, 70. So we now know that 7t equals 70. <laughs> 70 equals 70. Okay, so now we need to work out what t is. So 7 times t equals 70. What is the inverse of multiplication? It's division, well done. So we would need to do 70 divided by 7. Okay, so 70 divided by 7 equals 10. So we think that t equals 10. So then you would need to check that. So you're checking your answers today. So you're going to then work that through to check whether it's 10. 7 times 10 equals 70 and then do this part 70 plus 8 equals 78 so we know that that is correct yay so if you want to have a go at that there is an optional extension on the class page which will give you some algebraic equations for you to solve and then check your answers through Okay, well done, everybody. I can't wait to see how you get on. Bye.